So hello everybody. Welcome, welcome back uh, to the second uh, part of our plenary today. Um, well, we are still gaining, gaining people, but I believe we we are soon ready to to start our session on energy management. Energy management is one. Some of Thomas got muted. Oh, oh, sorry. Someone muted me in the uh, in the middle. So I was uh, welcoming everybody, and um, um, and uh, announcing that we have a very interesting session on energy management. Energy management is uh, uh, technically involved, and I guess we will have three excellent contributions on this uh, on this subject. Uh, and the first one is from Jürgen, Jürgen Fitschen from Hannover. He works as a system engineer uh, at a software company, SSV, and in particular, he works on energy efficient IoT solutions, where he uh, actually has, an, has a direct need for, for these type of technologies. So welcome, Jürgen. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, first question, can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect. So um, today I want to talk about seamless power management on IoT devices and lessons from an HVAC use case using Riot. HVAC is heating, ventilation and air condition. Um, my name is Jung Fitschen. I work at SSV Software Systems based in Germany, Hanover, and I'm personally using Riot since 2018. And in 2019, um, we developed this use case uh, that is already mentioned on the title slide. Um, so quite young user, but uh, a convinced user. <laughs> uh, spoiler alert, uh, what we are covering today, um, why does good power management matter, or at least to us? Um, how does it work? And then, I will tell you it's all about timers. Let's dive in. Um, why does good power management matter to us? So we are a company that is involved into retrofit uh, projects and yeah, we are trying to enhance efficiency and the value of existing systems and environments. For instance, if you have a machine and want to predict when it's going to break, you add for instance, some vibration sensors on the machine measure the vibration and some at some time you will have learned what the kind of pattern um, indicates that the machine is about to break. So you have to deploy sensors and actuators within existing systems and some retrofit systems doesn't require just one or two sensors. It can ramp up to 100 sensors plus. So a lot of stuff that needs to be installed. So you should go with battery powered sensors and actuators because otherwise nobody will use it. Um, I have an example, which is pretty close to our use case. Um, assume you are in the middle of a pandemic and you want to protect yourself and your colleagues uh, from the virus, and it already has been found out that's, that it is good practice to ventilate your rooms regularly and get fresh air in. So the task for the retrofit system is to send out notifications when a window should be opened. How do we achieve that? We install carbon dioxide uh, sensors in every room that measures the CO2 concentration. And if someone is in the room and doesn't open the window, the concentration will ramp up. So it's a good indicator whether you should open a window or not. Those values, measurement values are sent to a gateway, which itself forwards them to a, some kind of cloud solution server, you name it, doesn't matter here. And when the concentration is too high, uh, the server could send a notification email to 
the occupier of the room to open a window. Um, let's focus on how the CO2 sensor works internally. Um, it's driving through a cycle. First of all, we have a measurement phase where it measures the CO2 concentration. It takes around about 100 milliseconds. Then it sends out uh, the measurement value to the gateway. So the SMTX phase, then the gateway may answer or act the way we give it uh, 200 milliseconds to answer. And then it goes in a very long sleep phase. And after five minutes, all starts over again with the measurements phase. Um, in the current example, we are drawing certain currents in every phase. And with the current setup, and if we take a battery that has 2.4 amp hours of charge, uh, we gain a lifetime of a quarter of a year. That's not quite a lot. So we need to optimize. Um, we shouldn't touch the measurement TX and RX phase because then we are probably not fulfilling the full function of the sensor. But we can select uh, the right microcontroller and focus on energy management. And if we do so, we can reduce the current drawn during sleep drastically. And if I do so, please observe the lifetime. We can ramp, ramp up the lifetime to up to 10 years just by going down from milli 1 milliamp to 10 microamps uh, during sleep, which is possible nowadays. So, <clears throat> yeah, reduce power consumption during sleep phase to gain long lifetime of this sensor. How does power management work? First of all, the hardware must support power management. Um, I have a little diagram that is the condensed parts of the microcontroller SEM R30, but all the set, all the things I'm going to say are pretty much valid for any other microcontroller that focus on power management as well. So the microcontroller itself consists of a CPU and peripherals. Here I got four different per peripherals, which are pretty um, much the important parts for our use case. The th first three blocks are powered with a high-speed PLL clock to work. Um, then we have uh, a low-speed timer, which is clocked with a low-frequency clock. So it's just a 32 kilohertz crystal oscillator. And then we have the radio interface, which has its own crystal oscillator oscillating at 16 milli, uh, megahertz. In the current configuration, we are drawing around about 13 milliamps, quite a lot of current. But if we um, set the radio interface into sleep mode, we can reduce the current consumption. Of course, we are now not listening to the network, but we can know when there's a point where we do not need to listen to the network. So that's measurement number one. Measurement number two, in the microcontroller, there's a register. It's a sleep config register. And with the sleep config register, we can set the microcontroller from idle mode into standby mode. And if we do so, uh, the high-speed clock is turned off and all the peripherals that are fed from the high-speed clock are just freezing. They are uh, keeping their state, but they, they stall. Um, you have another power mode that's, that's the backup mode for this certain microcontroller. You can see, uh, save even more current, but in this case, it's all turned off. And if I turn it back on into idle mode, um, it just boots because it has lost its state. So we are aiming for the standby mode and the sleep mode during the sleep phases and yeah, switch back to idle during the operation of the um, sensor. We don't have to do this by hand, right? It has a driver for power management. It's pretty easy. Um, I want to give you a brief introduction. It's named PM Layered. 
and it knows or it's configured how many power modes the microcontroller knows. In this case, they are three. I just skip the off power mode and one must be entered at any time. So we need to be in one of these three power modes. So we just keeping track of those two, the standby mode and the backup mode. And we, yeah, we want to know which power mode can be safely entered. Because if the application needs the high-speed timer, which is fed from the high-speed clock, we must not enter standby or backup mode because it's only running in idle mode. So once the application is using the high-speed timer, standby mode must be blocked. If the application is done with the high-speed timer, it can unblock the standby mode. And if it do so, the lowest possible mode is the standby mode. So that's pretty much it. And this information is used by the idle thread. So when the microcontroller where right hasn't do to do anything work for all the other threads, the idle thread is entered. It uh, asks PM layout, which is the lowest mode I may enter and enters this mode. So it does all this uh, power mode switching automatically. But someone has to tell PM layout which modes are allowed and to have a seamless user experience. So user in terms of the developer of the application, drivers must interact with PM layout, not the developer, the drivers are the point. So it's all about timers. The current default system of Riot is named X-Timer. It's, it's a soft timer that multiplexes many timers or soft timers to one hardware time. Uh, here's some example code. It sets up two timer. The first one is a callback. We set up our soft timer instance. We configure it. This is our callback function that should be called. And we configure an argument that's just a string hello world. And if we call X timer set with the reference of uh, uh, to the soft timer and then time offset, it will run this callback after, um, after three seconds in this case. It awaits um, the offset in microseconds, so we have to convert those three seconds into microseconds. Um, that maybe seems a little bit complicated on the first glimpse, so X timer has some convenience functions. This is, for instance, X timer sleep 60. It just returns after 60 seconds. So in the background, all those X timer T uh, struct is also initialized and configured, but it's all hidden behind the implementation of X timer sleep. Um, from the overall perspective, this is how X timer works internally. We have a high speed clock that feeds the X timer driver instance with one megahertz, and we have some driver uses. So for instance, this could be example number one, could be this X timer T, example number two could be this, this X timer T, and the third X timer T could be another thread this, that's also running. Um, the problem here is the X timer requires the high speed timer all the time. So if at least one uh, X timer user is there, we can't turn off the high speed timer. So in our use case, and we need to be aware of time at any point, even in the, during the sleep phase, we must time those five minutes. Um, the standby mode must not be entered at any time if we are relying on X timer. But there's an alternative for the rescue. We have Z timer. Z timer has been merged early this year. And to port your application from X timer to Z timer, just swap out uh, the letter here because almost any method is also available in Z timer. And this is special in Z timer, you also prefix uh, the Z, Z timer clock. It's called, it's, it's like a time unit. And this time unit states in which units this offset has to be uh, stated. 
So we are setting up a Z timer U sec. So it's awaiting the offset in microseconds. And we are setting up Z timer M sec timer, which is stated in milliseconds. Um, to use this timer, we have to modify the app's make file. We add Z timer and both clocks. So the Z timer U sec and Z timer M sec initialize those driver in, uh, instances. So the first timer might run on this instance and the second may run on this instance. Currently, we are not gaining any um, benefits from using Z timer over X timer because we are still relying on the high speed timer. So let's extend the F smack file. I added that uh, Z timer per ref RTT. And this Z timer per ref RTT is a driver for the low speed driver uh, timer. So the Z timer MSEC clock selects now the low speed timer as its clock source and not the high speed timer. So we got rid of the dependency of Z timer MSEC depending on the high speed timer. So now we have the opportunity to switch off the high speed timer if no user on the microsecond basis is there. And yeah, the low speed timer will take care of that the Z timer M stack doesn't stall and we can, can go enter the standby mode because in standby mode, the low speed timer is still clocked. Um, switching those power modes can be done by a PM layer. So we sprinkle in also the dependency PM layered and we configure a Z timer to block and unblock the standby mode. So once uh, one user is using this driver instance, it blocks this power mode. And once uh, all users has been disappeared or all timers um, yeah, run out of time, um, this power mode is unblocked. So PM layout is called or is PM block and unblock is called by the Z timer driver. Furthermore, <laughs> we need to define the PM blocker initial value. Um, that's maybe a little bit hidden here, but these two digits here are setting uh, the default blocker count for the backup mode, and those are setting up the default blocker count for the standby mode. So in this mode or in this configuration, the untouched example is able to use power management. On the first three seconds, we use pretty much the three to uh, two to three milliamps. And after the three seconds has been expired, it goes down in, uh, in standby mode. It takes just a few microamps and the Z timer MZEC is still running. So X timer and Z timer can be friends and coexist. This is important because many parts of Riot are relying on X timer and we can't just wipe it and use just Z timer at the current situation of Riot. If you do so, a lot of things is happening. So um, because the high speed timer or the hardware beam be, uh, behind the high speed timer is used by Z timer, the X timer can't use this high speed timer. So we are using this module X timer on Z timer, which makes its X timer itself a user of Z timer USAC. So X timer is running on Z timer. And then there's a third timer I haven't told you about yet. It's the event timer, which is basically um, while X timer is on microsecond basis, event timer is on millisecond basis and it is used by the GNRC network stick. So um, on a standard network example, you get this little chain. It's a little bit feeling like a truck carried by a truck truck carried by a truck truck truck. So if you use the system, you have the problem that X timer on Z timer, so this connection, block standby mode all the time because X timer isn't disappearing during 
the runtime of the application. We can do better. Um, we can now use ZTimer per with RTT again. So we are using the low speed timer. We can use ZTimer MSEC again. So this picture should be known to you. But we are not using X timer on Z timer. This time we are using Z timer X timer compat, which is a compatibility layer that is or enables users of X timer to actually use Z timer without their knowledge. So please note this is a Z timer T, this is a X timer T. Both are using Z timer usage. The event timer itself can be running on ZTimer as well once this pull request here is merged. So this work is still ongoing, but with this setup, you are able to uh, run the GNRC network stack, which needs this event timers for housekeeping and still gain uh, power savings during, well, because the standby mode can be entered without the system losing functionality. But the ZTimer XTimer Compat doesn't implement all XTimer uh, 64 methods. So XTimer has the ability to state offsets in uh, 64 bits. This isn't implemented by ZTimer. And we are actually utilizing ZTimer in our use case with the hybrid of those two things here. <clears throat> So Riot Empowerment, status quo. The conclusion, Riot has all important parts for power management inside, but by default, they aren't configured for reasonable power savings. So if you want to gain power savings and power management, you have to make a really deep dive into Riot and learn how power management works and what are your settings that you have to make. It's just a few lines, but you, it takes weeks to learn what are those certain lines. Are. Furthermore, Riot has three different timer systems currently. Maybe there's a fourth info. It, it's somewhere hidden in deep in Riot, but I haven't found it yet. But there's an RDM going on, and sometime it will be merged and define what the standard timer systems uh, system of Riot should look like, and we can hopefully get back to just one time system that get, gets rid of all the problems I stated on the last side. But all in all, Riot is heading in the right direction for seamless power management. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, thanks, Jürgen. Uh, if you look at the chat, you see that there are a lot of uh, supplements to your talk already. Um, and uh, we, first of all, yeah, we, we clapped to your talk. That was very clear and very... Uh, uh, insightful. So now we are, we have time for questions uh, that need not be uh, stated only in the chat. Who wants to, to ask a question? Nobody? Um, I have one maybe. Yeah. It's, it's a meta thing. What's the name of the presentation tool? Uh, it's VBJS. It's just an HTML5. Uh, magic with some SVG and JavaScript. <laughs> okay, uh, Oleg has a question. If you're interested, I can upload it to GitHub. <laughs> it I have also a question. Sorry. <laughs> it looks really cool. Um, uh, yeah, thanks for the interesting presentation. Um, <clears throat> I think one of my questions has been already answered on your final slide. Um, that I would also really appreciate if you can go back to one timer. Um, but um, uh, regarding the, the energy savings you were um, aiming for, did you manage to to conduct some some real measurements to to, to check if the uh, energy savings that you are trying to achieve has been achieved in the end? Yeah. yeah so um, on the first slide, or one of the first slides, I showed you 10 microamps and this is what we are actually aiming so the microcontroller itself takes like 2.2 uh, microamps so very low and we can there's a dev board from microchip and you can measure currents with that 
that's pretty neat. And it's actually getting down to 2.2 microamps, but with all the chips around it. And so it's like more 10 microamps. What is the name of this uh, measurement dev kit? Uh, X Pro, some early R32. So um, I have here, here's the, uh, here's the product page of this microcontroller, and there you can okay. look up this board. Ah, okay, cool. Thank you. Unfortunately, you need your Windows to run this dev kit. <laughs> We have a question from Emmanuel. Um, hi, Jürgen. Thanks, thanks a lot for the nice talk. Um, so you mentioned this uh, RDM uh, on timers, and um, you said that it's it's probably converging to something that uh, that that is makes sense for you. Like, uh, do you uh, do you have m more um, precise input on this? Um, um, you know, you, so since you're using Z timer in production. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, are there any aspects of the RDM that you think is are you know um, not matching your, your requirements? Or um, I mean, uh, obviously, would be very interested in, in you know contributions to the to the RDM based on your uh, industrial use, right? Yeah, I will look onto this more in detail. So I've read about uh, I've read the RDM and I I. I think it's heading absolutely in the right direction. And if it would stay like it is, I could work with it without any problems. So it's still in a really good shape. Uh, the, but, it's a rather controversial RDM, I believe. So that's why Emmanuel asked. They have uh, quite uh, uh, different opinions on this if you look at the discussion. So it would be nice to get your feedback. Yeah. OK, I do that. OK, we have another question from uh, uh, Martin. Yeah. Um, so, given that, uh, I, I, so for first disclaimer, I'd never worked with ZTimer to be uh, clear. Um, so, um, but I used FTimer a lot because, as you said, it's used in GNC. And the use case behind it was actually uh, to um, have a, a timer that is able to handle multiple events with just one timer. That's why it uses millisecond because you can't actually do it in this much of a. Um, uh, in, in sort of a resolution. So my question is, do you think something like this could also be um, done with Ztimer so that you basically dispatch events using one single timer? Yeah, the, so the Ztimer MSEC uh, is pretty much comparable from the uh, to the event timer. So I had a look into GNRC. Of course, it's not just swapping out some function calls, but basically, yeah, um, you could swap to ZTimer MSEC here. Yep. But first of all, I try to bring uh, event timer on ZTimer into Riot, just do baby steps, and then sometimes we are getting to one time systems. But I think it's it's still a long way there uh, to go there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there is a question uh, um, I can read out from Hannes. Uh, do you support firmware updates with these sensors? Yeah, uh, uh, yes. I mean the use case sensors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, we do. So we are sending out uh, those firmware updates using multicast. So all sensors are registering that they need a firmware update. Then they send to the gateway, "Hey, do you have firmware for me?" This gateway response and uh, states a time delay that should be waited until the update is sent out using multicast. And if many sensors are doing the same within like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, they all wake up together and then receive uh, this multicast update. So what that's is, what we are doing here. What is the link layer techno technology you're using? Uh, we are sub gigahertz 800 to 15.4. So we have to deal with the duty cycle and so on and so forth. That's the reason why we went with multicast and not unicast. OK, so we have several more questions. We need to be a bit quicker now. <laughs> uh, Benjamin is uh, Freeman is the next. Um, 
Yeah, I would like to ask, um, have you tried the power management on other frameworks? And so, uh, yeah, what, what do you like about uh, Riot uh, in terms of power management? If, 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 you, if there's something in particular that you like? Um, no, I don't have so many experiences with other OSs and so on. Um, I just saw that Riot has this built in and so we went with Riot. So the reason is more because other technologies are available. So dri the driver situation was perfect for us. The uh, MCU was supported. And that's the reason why we switched or why we used uh, Riot in the first place. And then I already saw ZTimer on the horizon. And yeah, that's the reason why we went with Riot. OK, thank you. So we have a question from Philip, uh, who asks, do you think this is the timer topic is a big issue for commercial use? Um, I don't think so. So we are, it's the commercial use, our use case. So it's working perfectly. So it's, it's running in production. Some okay. first field tests are doing pretty well. So it's important, but not an issue. That's what you're saying. It's important to have a good uh, timer uh, system. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's crucial, at least when it comes to power management. And the last question by uh, Benjamin Valentin. Yeah, I just had a question regarding this uh, firmware multicast. Uh, how do you deal with the retransmissions if a node doesn't get a chunk? Um, we, we disable retransmission, and after the multicast phase, uh, the sensors are requesting chunks that they missed during the multicast update. Nice. So there's the second phase. Mm -hmm. um, we try to merge it to um, Riot once it has been proven to be pretty much usable. And so then you can have a deeper look. <laughs> that would be great. OK, thanks again, uh, Jürgen, for your talk and for your um, yeah, good discussion here.